outcome is uh, selling of alcoholic beverages. Now, uh, having a license or no license, the reasons for having a license are a great profitability, 60 to 80% gross profit, which is much larger than your profit on your food. So that's a great reason to sell alcoholic beverages. Um, you will need to have a license if you're going to sell the alcohol. Uh, can purchase a temporary license for off-premise events. Uh, click on the link for a list of various licenses. At Orange Coast College, we need to have approval for the service of wine, beer, or any liquor on our campus. Um, and students aren't allowed at those events unless it's actually in a learning process. A reason to not sell uh, liquor is that uh, you may not want to get into the purchase of uh, alcohol uh, liability that uh, goes with it also. But if you go through this slide, you can see the license you need, uh, the different forms, different types of service, training that's involved, the uh, legal um, limits, uh, some different statistics that are involved, uh, some signs of intoxication, um, variants in products, uh, the alcohol con content can be different, and the legal age varies uh, in states. So again, with legal limits, uh, determined by your blood alcohol level test, uh, driving under influence of alcohol is usually in the range of 0 0.01 and 0 0.02, which uh, is not much, but that's around four 8-ounce glasses of wine and two hard liquor drinks. All this depends on the person's size, medication he or she may take, and women generally it takes less. Drinking on a full stomach also can lessen the effects of alcohol. And some of the um, signs would be uh, intoxication, such as slurred speech, swaying from side to side, a glazed look in the eyes, tripping or stumbling. Tolerance of alcohol, uh, heavier weight can greatly increase the tolerance. Uh, again, the variance in prof the products, uh, the proofs. Now, how did that word come about, the proof? That used to be the, um, if you click on the link, it'll just show you, but because it could be ignited for gunpowder, uh, that's when it was uh, proofed. Uh, wines are 12 to 14 percent alcohol or 28 proof. Beers, 3 to 8 percent, um, or 16 percent proof. Hard liquor, rum is 80 percent proof, which is 40 percent alcohol. Amaretto is four, 56 proof, or 8, 28 percent alcohol. So we have this slide on bar and equipment. Uh, in the book, it has some basic information for your bar setup. Click on the link, and that can take you to a little more detailed information. Uh, as your book states, uh, you need your bar strainer, bar towels, bottles, um, bottle openers, uh, can openers, corkscrews, plenty of ice with tongs, scoops for serving, large pitchers, measuring spoons, mixing glasses or shakers, mixing or stirring spoons, one ounce jiggers, parry knives and zesters, and waste baskets. Um, so then, and then you have your mixers, garnishes, napkins, and barware. Um, the glassware that you want to have um, varies. You have a narrow tulip or flute glass for sparkling champagne, 8 to 10 ounce wide bull glasses or goblets for red wine, small wine glasses or ponies for port, pilsner glasses, sleeves for beer, 10 ounce highballs, uh, martini glasses, rocks or footed rock glasses, snifters for brandy. And portion control, very important um, when we do our wine tasting, we'll have a one ounce uh, controller on the top of the bottle. So when we pour, it actually will pour only one ounce and no more. Types of bar service, you have cash. Uh, that's where the guests like it the least because they have to pay for it. Uh, so the customers pay for their, their drinks. Open bar, that's where a guest like it the most because the client pays for the bar. Uh, usually the tip isn't included, but uh, they'll pay for that. Uh, by consumption, the host pays for the drinks till the end of the event, or maybe till a certain time. Next slide on wines. Um, 
Wines are really important. You want to have someone knowledgeable on your staff. It may be a sommelier or a wine store that has that knowledge. Temperatures of wines are very important. If you look in the page in your book, it describes all the appropriate temperatures. Um, very important, though, I would say in, in catering is um, while you may not have a red wine in the refrigerator all the time for a catered event, because it may be outdoors for a long period of time and get too warm, it's best to put it in the refrigerator prior to the event because by the time you have it out, it will be at the temperature it's supposed to be at. And in class, I'll give you a demonstration of handling and pouring wine and we'll do some tasting. Um, good to have staff that's trained in decanting of wines, um, opening and pouring. It's very important that uh, the labels face faces the guests and they get to see the the wine that they're getting. Um, corkage fees, typically if someone's bringing in their own bottles, you uh, charge for the corkage of that wine. Now for a champagne toast, I usually get about eight servings per bottle. Um, brunch type service, you want to have your controls, uh, you know, just keep pouring and keep pouring. You want, to, you want to make sure you're aware of the guests and how they're reacting to the consumption of that uh, beverage. This next slide has a uh, worksheet for beverage control. You want to make sure you're counting the bottles at a vent so that uh, if you're missing bottles, then there's something going on. Uh, so look at that, and you can simply understand uh, how many bottles are missing at that event, and you want to find out why. Uh, so uh, there's an estimation of beverage consumption that's important. Most people consume an average of two beverages per hour. People will drink more at an open bar because they're not paying for it. People drink more alcoholic beverages in cooler weather and more non-alcoholic beverages in warmer weather. More alcohol is consumed during evening events. Weekend events are uh, better for more consumption of alcohol. Uh, more alcohol beverages are consumed at social events. Uh, more non-alcoholic beverages during corporate events. More alcohol is needed if bartenders are free pouring rather than using measuring devices. Most popular liquors are vodka, gin, scotch, and bourbon. Now the customer to a bartender ratio for liquor it's 1 to 50 and 1 to 75 for beer and wine only. Um, this next slide is on your standard bar and beverage service. Make sure you go over in detail because some of the questions for, on your test will be from this slide. On uh, beverage services, continued slide, there are uh, vodka bars you could have, martini bars. Vodka is the most popular hard liquor in the U.S. Uh, it's drunk worldwide. You could have at the vodka bar infused vodkas, ice bar with bottles inserted in the ice, caviar station with that in addition to that, special decanters for the vodka, martini bars. Um, there's tons of recipes for martinis that can make it very fun. That could be gin or vodka plus a dry vermouth. Uh, many variations uh, that can include sake also. Now, a rolling bar, you could have that. That's a bar on wheels that can be brought to the guest. Uh, themed beverage bar, that could be um, margarita tequila, a sangria, which is great for Spanish theme, sake, a, a Japanese theme, and vodka, a Russian theme. Now, with beverage service, you also have non-alcoholic beverages. Um, no license needed here. Profit margin is not as great as an alcoholic beverage. A water service standard is water glasses on table filled with ice water prior to guests entering the room. Replenish often. Should not have to ask. The, the guest shouldn't have to ask. Water softeners are great. You want to have those for your equipment and as well as for uh, service of water. Water filters to keep it clean and fresh. Uh, bottled water offered to client is an option and a better profit margin here. Ice, uh, click on uh, the link here to view three makers of ice machines. Uh, there are very various types. You can have the crushed ice, you can have cubed ice, and you can have shaved ice. Uh, uh, many makers of those ice makers and uh, Hojasaki is a great one uh, and Manitoba is a, a great one also. Decide on the amount of ice you will need and how much you need to purchase and whether you want to make your own or buy it. 
And again, the, there's tube crushed, cube discs, squares, flakers. Those are the types of ice that you can have. Uh, filters, you need to change frequently, and it, it, it really depends on uh, the water that you get to your facility. And clean and sanitize equipment frequently. Coffee service, guests frequently may ask for the brand of coffee that's being served, uh, so that brand is important. Um, Upcharge for premium brands such as Starbucks or uh, maybe some great organic brand you're serving. Serve from glass, metal, silver, ceramic, or uh, stainless pots, depending upon type of service. Prop the proper service may use an underliner with a pot to guard against splashes. Long, narrow spouts will avoid splashing. Uh, fill the cup from the right with the cup left on the table. Fill close to top, leaving room for cream. Now the basics, you want to have a preset sugar and creamer, one sugar, one creamer uh, for every four guests. Um, that's not an individual creamer, that's a cup with a creamer, cream in it. Set warm coffee cups to the right of guests with the handles at the 4 o'clock. A cappuccino or espresso is great before, with, or after dessert. And so don't forget those coffee drinks. Uh, now that could be alcoholic drinks also. Uh, you could click on the links for those. Tea service, click on the link for the basic types, and second link is the uh, for further types. Third link is for defini definition of each type and the plant. Um, I'm going to go over those. Lots of different types of tea. Uh, you can have whole leaf. That's becoming more and more popular. Starbucks has even got into that. Green tea, you want to brew from 160 degrees, 180 degrees for three minutes. Black, you brew from 190 degrees to 210 degrees Fahrenheit for five minutes. Now the equipment needed is two preheated ceramic teapots. Hold at least uh, 12 ounces of uh, tea or hot water. Uh, one for the extra hot water, the second for infusing the tea. You want to have an underliner for the lemon wedge. A formal uh, vent, you might have it wrapped in cheesecloth. Heated cup with sauce. Uh, cream, sugar set cubes are best, or honey even. Um, Agave is really a neat, thing, a neat item to use too for a sweetener. Uh, tea service uh, basics, you want to have those basics down for your staff. You want to recite the tea list. Uh, ask if they want milk or lemon. Place teapot to the right above the cup and explain the length of steeping. That's important so the guest gets the full flavor of that tea.